a long walk. Um, I'm so very, very grateful to be here with you tonight. I'm going to read three nocturnes. Big Dipper Fireflies from Maya Bosworth. Silently at dusk, the big dippers rising from the grass, green and upward cinders, gentle, wandering stars. And we two on our knees, cupping them up, holding them close, like something we lost at the edge of the forest and loved. How we are enthralled as the soft green flush in the lamp we make of our hands comes and goes. How we peer into the improvised chambers we make with our fingers to see them housed. Their beetle wings striped like sunflower seeds and the tender segments of their bellies glimmering like tree sap breathing an emerald electric pulse. And though we've been disenchanted, strangers to ourselves in multiple prisons, unleaved, unskied, I've been ready to lie down, dearest dust, I have wanted to die. Once more, in wonder, the raw green girl who lives in me still trembles, ignites, and we open our hands like books, let them fly. The next poem is Ariadne's story of what happened to her brother, Asterios, who is also known, of course, as the Minotaur. Ariadne on Asterios' imprisonment in the labyrinth. Most people couldn't understand him. You had to listen. He had a way of speaking. Some sounds, some signs. Give, please, help. And usually about our mother, mine. Ma was mother, obviously. He called me knee. He'd tilt his head if he wanted to be petted. Could sway it for no, a nod for yes. Sometimes he was rough but I could manage him. The trick was to kick him behind the knees and he'd fold like a pile of blocks. We had a sign for sorry. You patted your chest. Sometimes I find myself patting there still, that blighted sorry place, as I apologize to him, lost in that far away forgetting zone. After his imprisonment, I'd lead him out at night. Daedalus showed me the way, the concealed door, the lock, the thread. At first, my brother would run like mad ahead of me along the path, head down, making his noise for happy, tacking back and forth. Often we went to the beach and swam in the dark the water firing all round us with tiny phosphorescent sparks. He'd spout the water out of his mouth like a joyous black-furred dolphin. When he was tired, he'd lie on the damp sand and watch the extravagant sky. A little noise for each slipped star, the Milky Way reflected in his eyes. For months, it was enough. But we are grandchildren of the sun. It sickens us not to feel its blaze. After a while, 
I could barely coax him out at night. And when we sat, all he would do was rest his head against his knees and slump and rock. Then he became so thin he could barely walk. I'd lead him tottering out and he'd sink to the ground, too weak to make the beach. He stank of piss. I was afraid, but couldn't think of how to get him free. I made excuses to visit less and was ashamed. One night, he turned his face to me and tilted so I'd stroke his cheek and signed the words slowly, clearly. I heard them plain as if he'd placed them singly in my brain. Want, die. And then he made the sign for help. Brother, look at me now. I'm signing sorry. It took me months to say yes. It took me years to find a way. And by the time he came with his swagger and deceit, looking under his eyelashes at our sister, Phaedra, you'd lost all speech. You were eating your own feces. You didn't know me. You didn't know yourself. And before I read my last poem, I just wanted to thank you, the audience, for being with us tonight and for listening so warmly and responsively. And a special hello to our beloveds watching online. I promised I'd wave. <laughs> um, I wore my sparkliest dress, the sparkliest thing I could find on eBay for you at home. <laughs> um, and thank you. Um, the poem I'm going to read, I know um, Backlisted Podcast made a bit of fuss of this poem, and I want to thank them for that, and by extension, all those who read and support our poems. I'm, I am immensely grateful. Dispatches. My daughter wakes in the deep, dream-ridden dark, hoists herself up by the bars of her cot, and screams into the wall. She's facing the wrong way out, like a sailor lost at the keel of her ship, screaming at the storm. I pick her up and rock her, feel her body soften, warm and heavy, snuffling at my shoulder, then soothing at my neck. I hold her for a while, look back, to night shifts at the nursing home where I once worked, its smell of disinfectant and piss, the old women pulling themselves up by their bed guards and crying for their mothers down the dimly lit corridors like tiny wizened orphans in their long flannel nightgowns, hoarse, bewildered, lost, I'm afraid my daughters will come to this, dragged up by metal hoists to be washed, as all the maps and star charts of their brains dissolve and the near world crumbles out from under them like white chalk cliffs washing away to a cloud of milk in a black and churning sea. I'm afraid that at the furthest outposts of the self, they'll remember me and call, and I won't be able to come, gone well ahead into the dark and left them alone. My girls, you were pilot lights to me. In the worst storms, how you shone. Let me somehow coalesce in your last firing cells. I hope my arms seem warm to you and that you hear me tell you 
how deeply you are loved. 